Welcome back to episode 53 of the ATD Baseball Podcast. We finally got some things to talk about in the MLB offseason. I think we're like three weeks into the offseason now. Full house today. Matt and Kyle look fantastic. They got brand new setups. I'm very excited about that. But before we touch on what we want to talk about, how are you gentlemen doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We're going to talk about my guy, Aaron Nola, in a little bit, and he is a Philadelphia oh. Philly for life. Yeah, we started early with that. That's right. That's all right. Um, but, yeah, I'm doing great. Kyle, how are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, bit of a quiet off season, but, you know, we've got some things to talk about today. I'm very excited about that. How are you doing, Mello? Good. Good. Still waiting for the Dodgers to do something, but... I think no news is good news. It means that the Andrew Friedman's busy at work, I hope. I got to ask, are we all ready for Thanksgiving, though, in a couple of days here? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Big Thanksgiving, kinda... guys, or not really? Mello? I'm the guy that's on the couch watching the football game all, all day long. I'm not going to talk to – I'll talk to my family, but – <laughs> Let call me when dinner's ready, and go. I'll go right back to the couch and watch the game with my uncles or my cousins or something. Favorite thing, favorite part of or favorite food, you know, part of the thanks Thanksgiving feast though. Peanut butter sandwiches. No, um, <laughs> I'm a big stuffing guy, so I like the turkey. But on one side of my family, they can do without it. So one side has the turkey. Then the other side I go to makes prime rib. Oh, it's delicious. Oh. Yes. All right. How about you guys? Kyle, what about you? Um, It's hard to say, but I, I think I'm going to have to double down with Mello on this and say stuffing. That's, I mean, it's, right. it's a classic. It. it it's a classic, and you can't go wrong. All right. I, I like mean, turkey guts. <laughs> <laughs> we might make it a clean sweep right here because I would say oh. something, too. Oh. Personally, as my, uh, like, just side dish, close second would probably be, like, a candied sweet potato or whatever, you, however you want to say that, sweet potato casserole, something like that. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> I know, Kyle. Whatever. Um, dessert Take wise, though, cheese. Give me pumpkin pie. I'm with you. Pumpkin pie. All right. All right. Got to go with the apple, fellas. Okay. You got to go with the apple. Can I can. That. I can do that. No, no, I can do both. Give me a. Give me a slice of both. We're getting fat today on, on Thanksgiving. I can. I can do it. Um, but let's jump right into the baseball talk then. Like I said, biggest story so far: Aaron Nola. Back to back to my Phillies, and I wasn't surprised necessarily. Um, I thought there was going to be a little more negotiating probably between Nola and the Braves, the Cardinals, the Dodgers possibly, and then he comes back to the Phillies and he's like, hey, this is what I've heard so far, and maybe that's what happened. We just didn't find out about it. Um, we found out a little bit. Some of the Some of the teams were – definitely in contact with him, but we didn't find out a lot of numbers necessarily. Just he probably took just a little bit less to stay with the Phillies. And yeah, now he's locked up to be our one or two guy, depending how good he and Wheeler are um, going forward. And just another core piece that Dave Dombrowski, the Phillies have locked up now for this nice little, hopefully six or seven year window ish. I, I love it. Okay, well, um, <laughs> just <laughs> to me, and it was so weird because when we first heard about negotiations with Aranola, it seemed like the Phillies and Nola's agent and him were not on the same terms with a contract extension. 
So that's why you heard a lot of the rumors that he's probably not going back to the Phillies. He's probably Braves, Cardinals, Dodgers. We just mentioned all the teams. But you mentioned it. I, I'm with you. I was expecting more negotiation, and it kind of tells me that maybe he he, ne- he never wanted to leave. If the Phillies were going to give him the right price, he was not going to go. And I like it. It's the right move. I know in all sports, we like chaos with trades and teams, players leaving for different teams. But sometimes it is kind of nice for your homegrown guys to stick around and not leave the first opportunity they get. And in a city like Philadelphia, where a lot of superstars seem like they want to leave town, I'm not talking about just the baseball. I'm talking about other sports. But good signing for the Phillies. I would have loved to have him. You heard me last week. I made my pitch. But I- I'm happy for Nola. Good for the Phillies. They made the right move. Yeah, um, I- I'm kind of just going to go off what you guys said. Um, I-, I love this move. I I I kind of I, I thought he was gonna leave I I really did and I will I will admit that I was wrong, uh, but I'm glad I'm wrong honestly I think he fits the Phillies so well he's their guy homegrown um, I also think that he may have sold himself short a little bit I think that he could have got more very easily and I think he could have squeezed more out of the Phillies too um, I mean this guy is exactly what you want on your team. Him, Garrett Cole, and Sandy Alcantara are the only three uh, starters in the league that has pitched the most innings, I believe, the last three or four years. That is what you want in your pitching staff. That is a workhorse, and it's one of the most rare but important pieces of a, uh, of a pitching staff. And to lock up a guy like Nola for this price, um, for this long, I think it's such a good thing for the Phillies and their staff going forward. It's good for the fan base. This is a guy you didn't want to let leave and they didn't. So uh, props to both sides for getting this done. And uh, I think it's a match made in heaven, honestly. Seven years, 172 came in maybe a little below what people thought. Some people were saying maybe a $200 million pitcher there for him. Um, Easily. Of course we haven't seen the upper end of Nola a whole lot. We saw the one year he finished third in Cy Young. I think that was 2021, I believe, um, or 22, whichever one it was. And that was sort of the top that we've, we've seen from him. He's consistent though. And that's, that's what you like. A guy who's consistently around at least a three and a half ERA or below. Um, and a guy who's going to throw 200 innings every season around there. He doesn't get injured a lot, or at least he hasn't so far. And he's definitely a hard worker, a guy that you feel good about giving money to. I mean, as weird as that sounds, there's some players that you don't feel great about giving a big contract to. You don't think they're going to continue to have the great work ethic like they had in the past. So I feel great about giving Aaron Ola this contract. And I feel good about the contract in general, too. I think um, when we look back at it, maybe the last couple of years won't look fantastic because he's like 31 now. Um but I'm willing to take it for the next, especially five years or so. He should be in his prime still. Um, but yeah, I, I got to agree with Melo too, that it's good for the game sort of to have guys like mobility is good to a degree, but you look at the NBA and like, it's too far in the NBA. Mobility is too much. Like it's good to have franchises have key players that their fans can look forward to every single year not just uh, expect the superstars to want to move around and not have anybody to not have a core group for fans to root for. Like you don't have to worry about getting a new Aaron Nola Jersey every year. Cause if you have one Aaron Nola Jersey from when he was drafted, it's good now um, versus like a Kevin Durant Jersey. You've gone through three or four. If you're just a Kevin Durant fan here recently, um, that being said, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to have to get rid of my Reese Hoskins Philly shirt because can't be wearing that to the games anymore. I'm going to have to get a Schwarber or Cassianos one or something here. But and uh, Philly, just for Nola. yeah, j- just one more thing to to kind of go off of what you guys just said. Um, I I that's the one thing I love about the sport of baseball, right? So 
you know, there's you're always buying these jerseys of players that your teams are trading for, doing this, doing that. And when you can get that one player to sign these long-term contracts, you don't need to be afraid. I mean, you're going to have a guy to root for for the rest of their career for your team. I have it in Judge. Mello, you got it in Mookie. Uh, uh, fucking Matt, you have it in like three players. So <laughs> so it, that's – it's it's good for the game and it's good for the fans of whichever team is signing these extensions to to these key guys and i think that is such an important role in this sport to take a quote from the great dead arm max scherzer himself (laughs) money is nice but winning is better he's got that right i'll give him that (laughs) That's why I left the Dodgers to go to the Mets. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. No, 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 How'd no, the no, Mets no, no, no. do next year? How'd I, the I, Mets I was do? Working that in, I was working that in your favor because I'm sure it wouldn't make it sense is. to leave the Dodgers to go to the Mets because the Mets, the Mets didn't win anything. Trust me. Okay. Okay. That was still a shot at the Dodgers, Melo. And yeah, I it was. It definitely I, was. Melo, I still think you need to remember that for next time. So. <laughs> I okay. yeah yep we'll leave it at that um, <laughs> we're going to stay on this starting pitcher strain though um, Cardinals they had gone out before this offseason even near the end of the regular season they were saying part of our offseason plan is we're going to need three more starting pitchers we're going to need to bring in three guys whether it's via trade or via free agency we're going to have to get three guys. We lost Jordan Montgomery to the Rangers in that trade. Our guy, Adam Wainwright, was getting old and the wheels were starting to fall off, but he retired then anyway. We need some guys to replace, um, to replenish our starting rotation. They've got two so far. They went out, they signed Kyle Gibson just today, and they signed Lance Lynn yesterday, I believe. So, Dodgers legend Lance Lynn right there. Yes. Um, um, go ahead. Seems like you know the Cardinals. Why don't you just bring everybody back from that 2011 championship team? Bring David Freeze back. Bring Albert Pujols out of retirement. Bring Yadier Molina back because it seems like that's what the Cardinals are doing. I I don't think Cardinal fans. This is like not exactly what they had in mind with starting pitching, but I, I at least they're doing something. I guess. I mean, it's two starters you feel at least okay about. I mean, you probably would prefer Gibson to be like a three in your rotation and Lance Lynn at this point, maybe a four, maybe a three. Um, But if you can still go out and get one of these top arms, I think they're linked with Yamamoto a little bit. So if that could be your ace going forward. Uh, I know you got some young guys in the organization you feel good about. Uh, Matthew uh, Liberator, I believe is his last name. It's at least spelled that way. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. So Liberator um, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. However you pronounce it. I know he's uh, a decent prospect coming up, and I think he's, he's made some major league starts, but um, I've heard only good things about him pretty much. So you got you got some guys that you feel okay with filling some of the back end parts, but uh, they should still go get Yamamoto, right, Kyle? Uh, no, that's that's oh. uh, that's something for the Yankees to do. Uh, no, but in in all seriousness, though, I I made a video on this, and the Cardinals, I don't want them to waste this opportunity here, right? So they are now the laughing stock of the NL Central. They're not many people are expecting much out of them. But I really, like, dude, I, I said this to you guys last year. I don't think that this team is as bad as what they're making themselves out to be. I'm sorry, but I really don't think they are. And yes, on the field in 2023, they were absolutely terrible. But I think they underperformed severely. I think Nolan Arenado and Paul, Goldsch- uh, Paul Goldschmidt are still two very, very capable players. And they can build around that offense. So then you just fix the pitching staff. The pitching was the number one issue. They ranked 24th in all of baseball and team ERA. 
You need to bring in some starters. Do not leave it at Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson. I like the pickups. I, I, I like the pickups. I think it's a good three, four, five guys to eat up some innings. Um, and I still think you can squeeze some good out of them. I, I like, yes, it's a little funny of what they're signing right now, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't mind them as long as it's not the big ones to this pitching staff. Blake Snell is available. Sonny Gray is available. Yamamoto's available. These are guys who you need to at least get one of them to plug into this rotation and see what can happen. Do not sell yourself short. If you are the Cardinals, you need to just, I really don't think they're that bad. Maybe I'm crazy for saying this, whatever it is, but I really don't think that they're that bad. They can go out, add some bats, uh, go get your ace right now. Go get him. And then build around the rest of the team because I don't think you're far off. Not to mention a conversation around the Cardinals recently has been a wealth of outfield depth in terms of yes. the prospects coming up and guys that yeah. you have at the major league level. Trade. Trade for yep. Tyler Glass now. Trade for Dylan Cease. Whoever other names that are available, I mean, those two are the biggest and the most prominent names. But go out and get one of those guys. If you can't lock down a Yamamoto, a Blake Snell, personality-wise, maybe you don't see that as a fit there in St. Louis. Maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, Sonny Gray seems like a great fit, but Atlanta yes. also seems like a great fit for him too. So. If you're not able to get one of those three guys, don't be afraid. Trade some of that outfield wealth that you have. I mean, be, well, you have you have enough out there. Yes, and the Brewers have virtually made everyone available. That pitching staff right there, you you have three options. And guess what? I mean, they would almost plug in as the ace of the Cardinals right now, whether you get Burns, Williams, or um, uh, Woodruff, who, whoever whoever the hell you want to get. So there is there is some moves out there you can make. And I, and I really like that you brought up that point because, I mean, Shane Bieber's out there too. These are guys you can trade for Bieber. if you don't want to spend the money. Bieber, I feel – Bieber would make a perfect fit in St. Louis, I feel. He's that low-key kind of, kind of guy, but he can go out there and become an ace of the staff when he is on. And when he's on, he's as good as anybody in the league. The Cardinals can't fumble this. I'm sorry, but I really don't think they can. Yeah, I like that going to the looking at Brewers looking for their starting pitching because, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, there's no loyalty left in this division anymore. So no. you can switch everybody around. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to keep banking on this until next season. And if they get off to a bad start again, maybe I'll get off of it. I don't think the Cardinals are going to be that bad again next year. I'm going to double it down. Just like I said with the White Sox last year. I don't think they're going to be that bad again. And this is I don't think they a can. step in. No. I mean, you can lose 100 games. I mean, can get worse. It's hard. It's hard to lose 100 games with Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado on your team. Like, just those two guys alone. You can ask the Rockies and Diamondbacks. They did that for many years. Well, they didn't have both of them, though. Well, on the same team. <laughs> too much talent on this team. That's that's the way Definitely. I feel. There's too much talent. Jordan Walker. Super prospect. Leave him at around. the big league level. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Cardinals need to go out, get some more starting pitching. Um, you mentioned... Brandon Woodruff. He is a free agent now. He was non-tendered by the Brewers, meaning his tag price tag price tag came up for arbitration this year. They said, no, thank you. We don't want to pay however much it was. I think it was like 11, 11 to 15 area there. And he's going to be out all of the 2024 season with, he just had a shoulder surgery or some for surgery. I think it was shoulder so he won't pitch in 2024 at all, but a team that can afford to put him on the shelf and rehab him for a year might sign him to a two-year deal, might sign him to like a three-year deal and, you know, make the average annual value a little bit lower because of the first season because you're just paying him to just be injured for the first season and rehab for your team. And then you're going to be getting him at a discounted price for the next two years or whatever because you don't know 
what he's going to look like coming off of that injury. So a nice piece for teams that have the money to wait a season. So like a, a Red Sox comes to mind. Cardinals, they definitely have money. They could if they wanted to. Um, the Dodgers, if they really wanted to, they could hold off for a year. But it sort of seems like they need starting pitching right now. Um, so any of these teams, go out and get Woodruff. I mean, you're going to get him at a discounted price because, like I said, you're paying him for a season to not pitch at all. But you're paying him to have him after that. And it could be a buy low, sell high kind of thing. If you're in a situation where maybe the team's not competitive in 2025, you can trade him at a trade deadline or in the offseason and get some good prospects for it. So somebody's going to give him a chance, and somebody's going to keep him on their team for a year. You just mentioned that I don't want the Dodgers to do that because we need starting pitching right now. And... You know, if we're going to shine Shohei Otani, it's like, well, we're going to be on, he's going to be on the shelf pitching wise already. So the last thing I need is two potential starting pitchers waiting, you know, for 2025. But there's going to be a market out there for him. He's too damn good. Somebody's going to give him a chance. Yeah. uh, You guys hit it on the head there. Um, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I mean, this guy is a prominent number three, number two in some of these staffs out there. Um, He's a guy who will eat up innings and give you 3.0 ERA, whatever it is. Uh, This is a guy who will get picked up, who will be serviceable, and will pitch for whichever team picks him up in 2025. Yep. Um, The Braves. I want to talk about them a little bit because they made some – they made some moves in the bullpen there. Traded for Aaron Bummer, left-handed relief pitcher from Chicago. Uh, the White Sox, that is. And sent over some guys that at one point were pretty respected in prospect circles and whatnot. It was a couple first-round picks. Guys, Mike Soroka, um, another guy that I can't remember his name right now because he didn't exactly pan out at the big league level. Um, but... Braves bolstering up that bullpen, Mike Soroka, and then they also locked up uh, Joe Jimenez. Um, so they're sort of just upgrading there. They had a decent bullpen last year. Uh, you might not have felt great about Rice L. Iglesias at the end, closing out the season or closing out the games, um, but they also lost Nick Anderson. I believe, I believe they traded him. I'm not sure traded him or somebody yeah. else signed him. Um, but yeah, Braves made a couple moves. You guys got any thoughts on that? Um, go ahead, Mello. No, oh, go for it. Go for it, Kyle. All right. So I, 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 I like all these moves that they're doing here. Um, the bullpen, it, I mean, we talked about it all last year. There was almost no holes on this Braves team. And the bullpen was maybe one of the holes that you could come up with. Um, I really, really like what they've been doing to the bullpen. I, I, I think bummer. It can still, I mean, you put him in that brave system and you don't, you don't, you never know what you're going to get out of him. He could turn into the next best reliever for this uh, Atlanta club. Um, and just real quick I'll, off tangent here, but I think I really like the move for, um, for Chicago to get Nicky Lopez and these, these other four guys in there. Uh, that's a, a really good move for Chicago, I thought. But um, adding Ronaldo Lopez to this uh, to this uh, bullpen was also another good bolstering move. Um, adding them to the guys that they already have, I think that's a that's a great great combo in there. And uh, if you can get Iglesias to get back on track like he was, there you go. That's all you need. I really like teams that are aggressive in free agency and address the matters they need. And, you know, even though the Braves are going to be in, I mean, they were in on Aaron Nola until a couple days ago until he signed, you know, let's see what happens with some of these other free agents. But as soon as free agency started, they're like, bam, we need bullpen help. We're going to go get our guys, worry about everything else later, but we need bullpen help. And I like that. 
And I mean, listen, the Braves are going to be really good. And this just stir up that bullpen. Might be scary next year for the Braves. 100%. I think I uh, made a mistake talking to Joe, Joe Jimenez. Did he get an extension? Is that is that what happened there? Because he's, he did not sign with the Braves. He was with the Braves. Um, maybe he signed an extension. I think I was thinking of Ronaldo Lopez. So um, ignore what I said. I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, Braves, of course, I don't love them shoring up their bullpen because Phillies fan. But objectively, yeah, go out there, be aggressive, and get some of these top guys while they're available. Be aggressive in the trade market. Get a guy. We talked about buy low, sell high with Brandon Woodruff. Aaron Bummer is sort of buying low right now. He came off a not not fantastic 2023 season, so but he has a track record. He has a track record of being a pretty good pitcher in the past. Um, and any time that you can add a, an arm like him with, like I just said, a track record like his, you feel pretty great about doing that, especially in the trade market, trading guys that I'm not going to say weren't going to be impactful for your team, but not necessarily. Nicky Lopez was... There was talks of him starting. He didn't. He was on the bench, uh, coming off the bench. And guys like Mike Soroka, obviously a great story of him making the comeback. But to be honest, you're not going to miss him out of your rotation. You got enough other guys there that you feel good about. So good move by the Braves, smart move by the Braves. But what do you come to expect from this Braves front office and Alex Anthopoulos is smart moves after smart moves. Um exactly. Giving out league minimum contracts to all their stars. That's right. I mean, hey, I'd sign Ronald Acuna for five years, a hundred million, if he'd sign it too. But <laughs> um, what else do we want to cover? Any other any other moves you guys want to talk about, or anything else you guys uh, want to cover? I I will say, contradicting to the Braves here, I like what the Royals have been doing, trading with the Braves. I think bringing in a guy like Kyle Wright, I think that is a, it's such a, a good thing for both of these parties involved, right? So the Royals are rebuilding, obviously. They have their pitching, their pitching prospects, uh, they're a little iffy. So I like bringing in the guy like Kyle Wright, bringing him into that rotation, and him having a fresh start. Um, I think can only do wonders for both these parties. Mello, any other moves? Uh, I would like to shut down Mike Trout to the Dodgers. That's not happening. Listen, maybe an M will be the show, but it's not happening. And quite frankly, I kind of don't want him to be honest with you. I understand he's Mike Trout. He's a great player, but and I, I know thirty teams would love to have him, but he hasn't been healthy in like four years. I, I just that that scares me a little bit. He's on the wrong side of thirty right now, and True. he can, you know, next year play 130, 140 games again, and you know all this is like, oh well, you know, Trout is back to doing Trout things, but he hasn't shown me that he can do that, and I'm not willing to give up my top five, top six prospects for that. Maybe if Trout was, you know, maybe. Four or five years ago, I'd heavily consider it, but not now. It's a it's a nice story, and don't get me wrong. I would love to have Trout. It just, I don't, I, it's not worth it. Use those prospects for something else, bigger down the road. I'm with you, Melo. I agree. There you go. Melo, shut it down. No Mike Trout to the Dodgers. Yes. No, Mike Trout. Give me Shohei Otani, though. I'll take him. (laughs) Yes. Mike Trout to the Phillies. That's still a rumor. Yeah, go to to the Philly and blow up their farm system. Don't blow up mine. What what farm system? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, blow up their depth chart, too. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Um, Yeah, I I think that's most of the moves we wanted to talk about. Um, Another thing that happened in the baseball world recently, um, some new nominees for the Hall of Fame came out, and 
So we want to give a quick shout out, quick, quickly discuss our thoughts on uh, the Hall of Fame ballot here. Um, the current 2024 ballot looks like Bobby Abreu, Jose Bautista, Carlos Beltran, Adrian Ugh. Beltre should be Congratulations. Uh, 100%. Yeah, you're getting in. Mark Burley, Bartolo Colon, Adrian Gonzalez, Todd Helton, Matt Holliday, Tori Hunter, Andrew Jones, Victor Martinez, Joe Maurer, Kyle's guy Andy Pettit, Brandon Phillips, Melo's all-time favorite player, Manny Ramirez, Jose Reyes, A-Rod, uh, Francisco Ooh. Rodriguez, my guy Jimmy Rollins, Gary Sheffield for the last time, um, James Shields, however in Whoa. the world he snuck his name on here, um, Chase Utley, Omar Vizquel, Billy Wagner, who really should get in but won't, um, and David Wright, who you need to stick around just a little bit longer, David Wright. I can appreciate your greatness, but I don't think you're getting in. Um, so right off the top, my thoughts. As I mentioned, Adrian Beltre, congratulations. You're definitely getting in. Uh, other than that. Joe Maurer, you got to wait. Joe Maurer, you sh- you definitely will get in, in my opinion. But like Melo said, you're not going to be a first ballot, I don't think. Uh, these other guys, though, you can no. you can make a case for some of them, but I don't. I just don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. There's some guys with the longevity, but like not really peak greatness. Greatness, and to me, that's not Hall of Fame. But then again, we have elected some questionable guys: Harold Baines, Scott Rowland, in recently. So, um, hey, we were there. <laughs> we were there. That's my thoughts on it. What What do you guys got on it? Is this the year that Todd Helton's finally going to get in? I know they hold cores, but Larry Walker got in, so that wasn't an issue. But all of a sudden, Todd Helton, I think this is like his ninth, if not tenth year on the ballot. And if I'm not mistaken, I think last year he got, like, he was around 65 to 70%. Yeah, Helton was maybe even, maybe even higher than that. So is this finally the year that he gets in? I'm anxious to see that, but everybody else, eh, eh, sorry guys, you guys will be remembered as honorable mentions in our hearts, but you're not, it's not Hall of Fame worthy, I'm sorry. Um, I, I definitely think Beltre gets in, um, and as if a there's a, war, if, <laughs> If there's a world that he doesn't get in, um, we can question this Hall of Fame voting even more. Um, I do agree with you guys that Maurer will get in at some point. I don't think it's this year. Um, and honestly, I think what hurts what hurts me personally and the most is that David Wright was hurt all those years. David Wright was one of my favorite players growing up. Um, oh, oh man. He was. He was. I'll admit yeah. it. Um, <laughs> I, I love David Wright. I love what he embodied. Um, you know, he, he was another one of those guys where loyalty meant more than, than money chasing. And I think, I think that's why I fell in love with him so much in his game. Um, he, he was such a good guy. Um, it really sucks that he was all those injuries and everything else. He, he's not getting in, obviously. Um, but that one stings a little bit for me. Matt, what's another Met from that era that you like? Jose Reyes. Oh, I, I like I, I like Reyes too. Paula Duca. <laughs> no, come on, I'd, not a fan. I, I know all those guys would get along very well with Chase Utley if they were to get in in the same induction class. Uh, I'm sure they. Oh yeah, I'm sure they would. Lovely with each other, um, but I mean, there's got to be one Matt. There's got to be at least one, right? Listen, I'm a Yankee fan, and I love David Wright. Come on. <laughs> A Met that I like, I mean, I like Zach Wheeler. He's a Philly now. He was. <laughs> uh, other than that, eh, not necessarily. But just some of these guys that are on the ballot, it's like, I mean, you mentioned Jose Reyes. I have his baseball reference up right now. 
I'm going to set the bar at 35, over or under 35 career war. What do you guys think? For Reyes? Yeah. I'm going to say over, but not by much. I'm going to say under. 37.4. So oh. just barely. Yeah, but like the standard is sort of 60 at this point. It, it 60 seems or like they, 60 or 70. Yeah. So it, it's just like this guy, I, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get in. Like you don't even have 2,000 career hit. Or, or he does. He does. Sorry. I was thinking of um, somebody else, but 283 career batting average, four time all star. Like, I, I don't know. And even Rollins is interesting to me. Um, 47 career war, just about at 2,500 career hits. He has the MVP, the longevity, a lot of the numbers, but it's like uh, the last like eight years of your career weren't great. And it, it sort of did you in there. Dodgers like legend. You, that's right. Dodgers legend, White Sox legend, uh, Jimmy Rollins. So there's too many guys where it's just, you were, you had a nice run or you were great for a year or great for four years. But then the rest of your career is like what happened or on the flip side, like a Carlos Beltran, you were good for like 20 years and you were able to compound uh, all those stats on each other to, get to the point where you have a 70 career war and that's sort of that's really good almost or over 2700 career hits 435 career home runs but you played for 20 years and that's sort of how you got there like top four and mvp once won the rookie of the year i don't know i don't think that's hall of fame worthy right there Chase Utley, 64 and a half war, 18, almost 1,900 hits, 260 home runs, and a 275 career batting average. Eh. See, I think, if, I think if he got uh, 300 career home runs and 2,000 hits, yeah, maybe you could make a case for it then. Some of those are sort of milestone numbers that, like, you notice, you pick up from how the Hall of Fame votes. Three thousand or two thousand hits at least is sort of a something they definitely look at. It seems like, um, but yeah, Utley, I, I hate I hate to say it, but I don't think you're a Hall of Famer, Chase Utley. Very good, but you're not a Hall of Famer. You know, I've been mentioning this the last couple of years. You know, as the years go on, and I've noticed this specifically in the last, like, three years, a lot of the guys that we saw, either they were at the end, in the middle, or towards the end of their careers, they are now on the ballot. We're getting old. (laughs) We're getting old. Because, like, I remember watching Chase Utley as a Dodger. Jimmy Rollins, too, as a Dodger. Adrian Gonzalez, he's not going to get in. But I remember him as a Padre Red Sox and a damn Dodger. All these guys. And now they're not going to get in. But just seeing them on the ballot just is like, damn, like, we're getting old. What the heck? And it's going to get worse. Andy Pettit, right, Kyle? Oh, don't don't get me started with Andy Pettit because I vividly – like extremely vividly remember watching him pitch like it was yesterday. Um, yeah, it's, it, it sucks. And how I was talking about David Wright. I mean, this it's, <laughs> it's going to get worse as the years go on. And uh, dude, two, three years from now, we're going to be really talking about it. Cause that's when, I mean, that's, we'll see uh, a pool hole yeah. soon. We'll see oh. a Miggy. I mean, that's five years from now, but we'll see a Miggy Melina. soon. Molina, Posey. Just wait until we see. Uh, wait until we see Kershaw. <laughs> oh, like I said, I'm gonna cry that day. <laughs> We're gonna be there. Ella will be there. I'll be an emotional wreck that whole weekend. 
That's right. <laughs> it is insane. We keep keep getting closer to the guys that we're like grew up with, and now they're on their way into the Hall of Fame or knocking on the door. So, yeah, uh, of course we'll talk about it more once the voting happens and whenever January. It's January. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. We'll cover that more then, but just a little taste to mix it up a little bit in between the uh, free agency talk and the trade talk. So just a little refresher there, and I think that's going to it's gonna be everything for this episode unless you guys got anything else. No? Shout out to all the award winners last week. That's right. No obvious, or every, everyone was obvious, no. it felt like. Yeah, it was. No one we were sweating out. No. At all. Mm-mm. No. So that sort of takes the glamour and the fun away from it a little bit. But nah, I don't know. But yeah, shout out to all of them. Congratulations, Shoei Otani and your dog. Uh, Mookie was, was robbed. Was to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, not that dumb. Not that delusional. <laughs> but yeah, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope you enjoy it. You can listen to this while you're on your road trip to your grandma's, your aunt's, your uh, mom and dad's, wherever you're headed for Thanksgiving. And if you get sick of your family, just put on your AirPods and listen to us. That's right. We're like your second. Then your family won't seem too bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we'll we'll take away a nice forty minutes of the uh, endurance of having to listen to your uncle and. Whatever else you got to do. I mean, have fun with all that awkward family small talk. You can oh, do yeah. it. You can, you, can, you can battle through it. We believe in you. Yes. Um, it only happens like once or twice a year. You got this. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be back next Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Hopefully some more big news to talk about. And, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Later. Adios. Later.